What's up guys, Celestia here again, back with another guide. This time it's for the Hellions Atonement Brutal Challenge. I decided to go back and do a few of these because a few people are still struggling with them. This is kind of just a fun build. You're going to hear the same noise over and over again though, because you're going to be using Quake Magic constantly in this <laughs> in this guide. So you're going to be using Yuffie as the main caster of this, because she can actually cast it four times with Earth's Arcane Ward. And yeah, it's pretty much how it goes the entire time here. You want to use Stop to make sure that none of them can move. And then you're just going to keep pounding them with a quake ga magic. So as you'll see it here, when I cast it, so I'm setting everything up here first. So I've stopped them all and building some ATB using doppelganger just so we've got two Yuffies. And then ATB boost and start quaking. And you'll see how much damage this does. Do not have your PlayStation in graphics mode when you're doing this though, because I've heard it's pretty taxing on the PlayStation. I'm doing this in performance mode, so it's running at 60 FPS, but the the amount of quakes that are going off is kind of insane. And you're pretty much going to do this for the entirety of this battle. I went through Hellion's Entonement pretty quickly with this build. I went through this the normal way when I first played this, and it wasn't actually too bad, just kind of having my characters as normal. You could probably use the same similar build that I used for the guide that I just recently put up, which is the, the wind magic build for Aerith. Probably does about the same amount of damage, or maybe more, but the, the quake build is pretty fun because if they're all stuck together and you're using magnify and using quake at the same time, it's going to hit them like an insane amount of times because quake has a big AoE. So pretty simple here. As you're seeing, Aerith is casting face, faith on Yuffie. Kate Sith has froze them all with the time magic. Yuffie's building up some ATB for doppelganger. And then she's just going to doppelganger and then use ATB boost and then just cast it all again. Just like that. That's literally this entire build all the way through this. And if they're closer together, obviously it does more damage. But if they're further apart, they're probably still going to die. There was only one fight in this that I found a little bit iffy, which was the last fight with Tomberry King. Just because I don't think I actually had any items on me that could stop insta-death. I think Aerith potentially had something on her like that, but for the most part we're just blasting them as fast as we can with powerful magic. So they die. And as you can see this was done on my live stream, so this is when I was testing out some broken builds that people had told me about. So Aerith actually casts Comet as well during this, because she, she auto-casts it when Yuffie does things. And also, I think she just auto-casts it normally whenever she gets some ATB. But it does take a while to cast, so she's a bit vulnerable when she's doing it. I wonder if this would work with the, the Wind Magic build. Might have to try that out as well. But with this, I'm probably going to be redoing some of the challenges with the, the characters, like the single character ones. Just because a lot of people were saying they hadn't actually got the God of Damarung then. And I know a lot of people are still struggling with the, the rulers of the outer worlds, which is a bit strange because I, I was one of those people that did them all in order. So I went from literally the first challenge all the way to the last challenge not stopping. So I, I didn't complete any other ones until I got past one. Because I actually thought they were going to be done in order of difficulty, but they definitely aren't. Because <laughs> the ruler of the outer worlds is probably one of the hardest ones. And then when you get to the end of the list, it's the Sephiroth fight. And that's actually one of the easiest ones. But this one here, this was actually the one that killed me a bunch of times when trying this out. So you have to make sure that you stagger them with physical attacks. The Adjudicator. Because if you don't stagger them with phys physical attacks, they will reflect magic back at you. Yeah, so when you pressure it with physical, it's susceptible to magic. So now we can cast Quake Gah. Because last time I did Quake Gut, it killed my entire team. Because it reflected it all back at us. This is probably the only enemy that has a reflector in this, apart from the eye enemy near the end. It's the, the weird slime thing with all the eyes. I can't remember what it's called. But it does also have a reflector, so you can wait for the reflector to come off, or you can just hit it a different way. But then once you've done this, you can pretty much just cast Quake again, and it'll die. Just like this. And then again, same thing. Just keep casting quick. Like I said, you will be hearing this noise a lot. 
and then Aerith is casting her Comet spell at the same time, which seems to actually be hitting quite a lot of them, which usually isn't the case. It seems like it, yeah. Quake is super OP, yeah. I didn't realize until now. But that's pretty much the guide, guys. Just follow through doing this. So buff Yuffie with Faith. Use Doppelganger so you can cast four times the amount of magic. Make sure to use Arcane Ward with Aerith. Use Stop with Kate Sith as soon as possible. He also has a bunch of stuff on this build that makes Stop last for longer. And then once you've got them all kind of stopped, just use Quake and just destroy them all. So continue watching, you'll kind of see how each fight goes. There's not really a hard fight in this. I think there's maybe just a couple of enemies that are a little bit stronger than others. But for the most part, it's literally just all the enemies are going to get nuked by Quake. And you're just going to stand there doing the same thing over and over again. Just like this. And the stagger bar goes up so fast. So they're all going to be pressured by the time... Well, they're all going to be staggered by the time you get your first Quake off. And I'm pretty sure it... It's been a while since I used this build because this was done on my stream. And that was a wee while ago, but I haven't actually released this video yet. I'm pretty sure she has ATB stagger on. Which is great, because you get loads of ATB back when all the enemies get staggered, so you can just cast it again. Okay, the flan might be an issue. This one I thought would be really difficult, just with the fact that the flan usually absorbs elements. But I don't think Quake actually has an element in this. I think it's like Gravager, where it, it doesn't actually have an element. So same again, buff Yuffie, Wait, get some ATB, get and for some reason the flan didn't get stopped, but it doesn't really matter. Doppelganger, ATB quake? boost, quake. And they're quite close to each other, so they're both going to get hit, and this does mad damage. It's a spell, so you'd think that the, the flan wouldn't be that affected, but it literally just kills it. And then, as we know, this white wolf enemy has an insane amount of health. We've seen this in the cloud fight. Comet doing a little bit of damage, but we're just building up some more ATB with Yuffie. You could potentially combo this with the broom, uh, the Brumel form one, and just give it to Aerith, like I did with my. You know what? I'm just going to make a, a guide for that as well. But for, to be fair, for a basic build like this, it does an insane amount of damage. There we go, next one down, on to the next. <laughs> I'm just wanting to see like what this can kind of work against. This is 10 fights, right? So we're on 5? 6? 6. So we're already on the 6th fight. And same again, stop. Faith. Arcane Ward as well. Oh shit, I should have like... I didn't actually ATB boost with Aerith here, so Yuffie's going to be a little bit weaker unless we get some faith on her, which we do. They're almost about to run out of stop here, which you don't want, but you can usually stop them about two or three times before they become immune. And here I was just making sure Kate Seth had another stop. And then we do the same thing, just yes, quake. The They're all right next to each other here, so this is what you want. And even though the doppelganger version isn't doing a lot of damage, it's doing a lot of stagger, which is what you want. And they all get away with this pretty fast, but it doesn't really matter. I do actually wonder how they're going to balance magic in the next game, because we've found some pretty amazing broken builds in this game. And it all revolves around magic. There's no there's no like physical build that's insane in this game. Tifa's dive kick is good, but most of the most of the characters, if they use a magic build, will just destroy everybody, whereas if they use a physical build, most of the time they're only going to do like pff, maybe 10,000 or a little bit more. Whereas these magic builds just spit out damage. 
So now we've got the two worms. I thought these were actually going to be really difficult, but they're probably one of the easiest bosses in this. Because they're right next to each other, so we just make sure they stop. ATB boost, and then we're going to Arcane Ward and Faith. Build up a little bit of ATB. Doppelganger. And then ATB boost and start casting quick. You'll get into the rhythm as you do this. When I first did this, I'm pretty sure I died the first couple times just because I wasn't used to doing the setup. But it's like anything, once you've got the setup down, you're pretty, pretty good to go. I don't know how this one became unstopped, but it did, so we have to stop it again just to make sure. And there we go. Dead. Uh, what does Petrify do on enemies? It doesn't seem to do very much. Because I, I seem to be testing the area here and it doesn't seem to be doing it. It just builds up and then stops. I don't know if it does more damage. Like if you guys can hear what my damage, my stream self is saying, it gets to Petrification does actually work against enemies, but these ones, I'm pretty sure they're immune to it. If you do it on the, the lower rank ones, Wait, if you put Petrify on your well, weapons, you can usually Petrify the enemies and it takes them straight out of the battle. But to be fair, the enemies that are weak to Petrify will usually just die by your attacks anyway. This is, bad. this is where I made a mistake. So, you do not want to cast stop here, because this hecked eyes enemy like reflects everything. I thought this was a uh, kind of rip for the run here, but right. so it was fine. We all got out. And I used Breach to get rid of the stupid reflector. And with Kate Sift, I get a little bit more ATB just so I can stop them both, and then we start casting the Quake. Oh, uh, really? Silence Kate Sift? <laughs> or we would, but it silences us as well. This fight was not fun. But yes, do not use stop when you first come into this fight, because you will probably end up dying. I don't know how I didn't die here. Right. I think I just got lucky here. Uh, it's quite cool if you stop the enemies, their effects still stay here though. Because it's poison breath is still there, but it doesn't hit me. Which is really cool. What reflected? Oh no, Aerith is petrified. I was like, what? So Aerith is actually basically gone out of this fight, but since we still have Yuffie and Kate Sith, we can pretty much just destroy these guys with the Quake Gust spells. Hi Zer, thank you for the, the sub. Right, so I can't cast it like a million times because I don't have the ATB ward. So we don't have ATB ward here, but we're still using Doppelganger, so we're able to do a fair amount of damage to this thing. This thing's the only thing alive. But you saw how much havoc that caused by basically reflecting time on ourselves and stopping us. Not the most bright of things to do, but it still worked out in the end, I guess. But yeah, so I'm going to be doing quite a lot of builds for this game just to see, kind of see what works best. Because Aerith's Brumal Form Wind Magic build that I did for Rulers just previously, that is really good. And that's against the summons. So I wonder if it would actually be useful against these guys. Because nothing really seems to have resistance to wind. But then again, Quake is kind of similar because Quake isn't really an element from what I've, what I've seen. So same again. Right Do all the usual, the get Doppelganger out and start casting magic. The big Adamantois is actually quite annoying because it has a lot of health. But just spam your quick magic. The eyeball seems to get killed pretty quick, but the Adamantois is pretty tough. As you see, it's not really taking very much damage here. But you can stop them again. Like I said, you can stop them about two or three times before they completely stop being um, resistant to it. 
So it's almost staggered. Once this thing's staggered, we'll do crazy damage. And there we go, staggered. So we got more ATB back because we have ATB, uh, ATB staggered, not ATB assist. And so close to being dead. I'm sure I can just stop three times before it stops. This is where I was testing out the stop mechanic, yep. It does run down a lot faster when you stop them the third time though, so it's almost about to run out right now, yeah. It's just basically just to give yourself a little bit longer, damage wise. But like I've said in the previous video guys, if you have any build ideas or anything you want me to show off, let me know. Because I've just basically been messing around with all the, the magic and stuff in this game. There is a lot of crazy stuff you can do with the magic in this game. You can't really do much with physical. Like, it's literally just buff your damage and maybe do like a really powerful physical attack. Whereas magic, you can magnify it, you can add special effects, you can buff your magic damage, you can use oh, special like magic like quake next to each other so it does more damage. This was quite annoying because I totally forgot that Tomb King does this, where it slows you all down, so building ATB is quite a hassle. But as you've seen with my previous videos, I usually show off my mistakes as well, so if you are playing kind of sloppy and freezing yourself with your stop magic or not doing things perfectly, you can still win. It's not impossible. That's why I'm not one of those people that does perfect runs. Like, I'm not going to spend three hours on something and make it perfect just so you guys can see about three or four hours worth of work in ten minutes. It's better to show you the mistakes so you can see if there's something that you can maybe do differently or if that's something you make a mistake with and see if you can kind of still survive after it, which is why I do the guides this way. So same again, you've stopped them all. Let's start casting quick. The Tombury King can kill you pretty quickly if he gets out, so make sure to keep stopping him. And we're not building ATB at all here because of the, the slowdown, but since we staggered the Joker and it's next to the Tombury King, we can actually keep casting Quake, and it'll do a lot more damage. And I'm Kate Sith attacking in the Quake here. So since they're stuck in the Quake, I'm building up some ATB with Kate Sith. So we can stop them again and just finish off doing this. Like the previous videos, I'll show you the build at the end. It's not too difficult to kind of manage. You just need to make sure you have some buffs on Aerith. Make sure you use our Arcane Ward. If you're using Yuffie, you could potentially just use Aerith. And maybe substitute Yuffie for someone else. But um, you need Kate Seth because his debuffs do a lot longer debuff duration. Because of his certain weapon that he has. And I like using Yuffie because she does doppelganger. And it does a lot of damage because of the four attacks. If you're in Arcane Ward. So here I didn't panic. And I managed to raise Yuffie back up. After her getting insta-killed. I think Aerith actually has a, an item that stops insta-death here. So that's the only reason she's still alive. So here I haste Yuffie up just so she's able to build some ATB. Because we've got about 5 Tombreys here plus the King which we don't really want. And then quickly cast Quake. And there we go, staggered the King finally and he is dead. So I think Aerith would have been dead there but she had the Ayama. Uh, and there we go. I always forget that. So that's Hellion's Entombment defeated. And it also shows me that I did it in about 6 minutes or something. Which I'm pretty sure this isn't it. 8 minutes, oh, yeah. Definitely not 8 minutes. But anyway, I'll show you guys the build now so you can kind of replicate it and see what you think. I was expecting to kind of die there, but I didn't. Right guys, now for the build. So the way you use this build is... Yuffie, you can use a bunch of other characters. I think Cloud's one of the other characters you can use because he has that magic build with the, the wind magic, or you can use Quake, but either way. We use Yuffie because I like doppelganger and basically breaking the PlayStation with how much magic's on screen at the same time. So we have the Crescent Sickle, the Cetra Embracer, the Speed Demon Keychain, and then I think you can swap that out for whatever you want that's previously just left over from my other build. I didn't really use very much with Yuffie, I think you can maybe use a Fury Ring or some other things that buffer damage. Anyway, we have Magnify with Petrify, so we've been casting Quake, and Quake's a big AoE, so when you magnify it and they're next to each other, you're going to get a lot of damage. Enemy skill, just for the boosts. ATB boost for more ATB, obviously. First strike, so she starts with some ATB stagger, so whenever you stagger all the enemies, you're getting a bunch of ATB back. Phoenix, to increase the magic damage. 
Petrify, linked to magic efficiency, so it reduces the cost. MP Absorb with Poison and Petrify. To be fair, when you have MP Absorb on, you usually don't need magic efficiency. You could probably put on the, the magic boost and damage one, but I was just being safe with this. Like I said, just kind of testing it out and it went pretty well on stream, so I decided I'll keep it. Um, then you have magic up to increase the magic. And then if you guys don't know, auto cast materia actually gives you a pretty decent chunk of magic attack just for having it in. So for example, if I remove it, you can see we lose four points of magic. So you want to make sure if you've got a bunch of these, just stick them in. Oh, actually, I think that's magic. Yeah, magic attack. So you lose some of that and then you get some more magic as well. So yeah, make sure they're in there if you have some extra slots. If you want to remove any more, you can, but pretty sure you're you're fine with this. Then ATB charge up rate, open an ATB bonus, just so we've got a little bit more ATB. Precision defense and synergy damage up. I think these are kind of useless, but I just put them in there just for the hell of it. Aerith, we've got the Gambantine, Hades Armlet, Choco King's Cape, so she gets an extra ATB at the start. We have Precision Defense, in case you need to block with her. ATB Boost, Barrier. I don't really use it, but it's there in case. Steadfast Block, Healing Materia, Chakra, in case we need to heal. Gilgamesh, just for a little bit of extra stats there. Revival, Empowerment, ATB Assist. Empowerment's for Faith, by the way, just so we can buff Yuffie a bit more. Warding with Subversion, because you've got things like the enemies that have reflectors and stuff which you can actually cast to remove it then you have synergy with comet so she will actually cast comet um, I'm not sure if she casts uh, Cometeor but she does seem to cast comet quite a lot but it is quite slow so that's why we use this not so fleeting familiar magic attack power plus 20 A to B charge up rate and reprieve so if she gets hit she when she's almost dead she won't die uh, I think that activates in this fight but it's pretty good and then Iron Megaphone on Kate Sith, we're only using this because it has really good abilities. The actual materia slots are terrible as you can see. So with Kate Sith, you want to make sure you've got Time Materia. Oh, also, set an armlet and enhance Marlboro Orb. I'm pretty sure the orb stops you from dying immediately. Um, increases max MP. Oh no, it extends the detrimental status effects. So we've already got that plus more, so you'll see that in a second. So enhance Marlboro Orb, you craft that. Time Materia, Swift Cast, so we can cast it really fast at the start. Magic Focus, Time Materia. Magic Focus, Time Materia. So I guess you're using it mostly for this to stop them, so you can't really use it to boost the power of Quake. Time Materia, Magnify, so it'll hit three enemies at maximum. I kept wondering why it wasn't freezing everyone, but when you get to a point in certain ones later on, you have about six or seven enemies, so it doesn't freeze everyone, it only freezes three. MP Up. Chakra, just in case we need a bit of healing, Steadfast Block, and First Strike. And then the last ones are Debuff Extension, so it increases the duration of detrimental stats effects by 25%, which is really good, coupled with the Enhanced Malboro Orb, even better. And then another one, another 25%, and then MP plus 3, MP plus 3. You can kind of swap these out for whatever you want, but I decided to put it on that. If you want to maybe put Mikkel Sentinel on there, or put a bit more attack power, even though you don't really attack with Kate Sith, go for it. But yeah, that's pretty much the build, guys, and you saw how potent it was it actually works in quite a lot of these brutal challenges i did quite a few of them i think there was only one that it didn't really work that well with but i'm gonna make a few builds so like i said if you guys have any suggestions for builds let me know or if you guys are struggling with anything let me know and i'll see if there's something i can maybe tweak to make it a little bit easier but yeah hopefully this has been helpful like i said i always forget to say this but subscribe to the channel because it is actually quite cool to see the channel grow a bit and yeah all the links are down below for everything you need and yeah hopefully you guys have got your platinum by now or you're on your way to getting your platinum you guys have a great day and i'll see you in the next video Bye bye